you see that? It's a good job I had hold of the chuck, weren't it? Trying to spin it out. Trying to pull it out. And I jammed that in with a hammer as well. With a rubber mallet. So I think it's about time I got myself a drawbar for the tailstock. <laughs> I think. I've got to get myself another camera, this is rubbish. It took me about 15 20 minutes to try to get it to focus. It's not that hard, is it? Sixty-eight and a half. Sixty-eight and a half, which is too small for the tenon. Here's a parting tool. to go wider than that. Uh, I'm going to use this small hollowing tool, see how it goes for now, from uh, oh God, what's his name? Some Hope. Simon Hope. Um, it's a cardboard, cut, uh, cardboard cutter. Yeah, cut it. Carbide cut Oh my god, I need a break. It's a carbide cutter and it's ground at 45 degrees, the actual shaft. So when you've got your the square bar on the tool rest, the cutter is at 45 degrees. And if you want to turn the lathe the other way, you turn the bar 90 degrees and then that's done at 45. And it's incredibly sharp. And very quick. You can see how it's just making mince meat of the U. Reverse the turn on the lathe. This is going in quite far. It's going in that uh, going in that far. And there's very little, uh, very little chatter. So it's very, a very good tool. You can see the wisps coming out.
almost silent on the end grain then when it comes round to face grain, face grain that's when you hear it. It's touching the end grain now. Those thin wispy cuttings. As it gets to the face, that's when you hear it. Very carefully, go in with a French curve. French curve, that's what it's called. Just nicely. It's about perfect that is for uh, for sanding. Still a bit rough at the edge. I've got to take that down anyway for the tenon. So. Parting tool. Turn the lathe the right way. I'm in hope again. That's <laughs> How's that? That's perfect. That was lucky. That's perfect. No waggle. Nice and smooth to put in. And no wiggle side to side. Obviously I've still got to sand that, so I've got to be very light sanding around that edge. Failed. There's jam chock here. I've got that forced on as tight as it could possibly go. That tight, I couldn't pull it off. I was just chipping away with a. Uh, is that that say? I was chipping away with a parting tool. 
just nudge, 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 you know what I mean? Just chip it down to put a mortise in because I knew it was weak, so I couldn't just dig in. All of a sudden, it decided to throw itself off, and the tool rest was in the way, so it jammed itself between the tool rest and the jam chuck, chucked itself off, and split it down. So, the idea of having a thin thin section of wood as part of this it's now going to have to be fatter a little bit fatter and I have to chip, uh, chip all this down until I get to good wood I have another uh, section of wood that's thicker and that should sink this into it so this is going to be thinner, you're going to have a different bit of wood round, round the corner. And then that different piece of wood is obviously still going to have the same tenon on. To press down into there. So, I'm not going to record anymore. Because I'm concentrating on the video. Thinking, yeah I mean, I'm thinking about the video more than this. So, I'm not going to record anymore until I've got this extra section and that it's all glued up perfect and it's all ready to go together ready to trim down and sand so that's it for the video in don't know where the video ended but I put three coats of wood wax 22 on that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this Howard Sunshield um, oil on it beeswax and orange oil now it's the first time I put oil on after wax now I'm going to put the wax on I'm assuming anyway you put the oil on first and then the wax well, I'm going to see how this goes. I've used this stuff before, beautiful stuff. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot of this at all. Especially after you put wax on.
of dry rug. Just take the excess off. I'll put another coat on with that rag. dry see how that looks now it's got a nice sheen on it a little bit more Howard that's well lubricated it's not dry you're not going to get all little bits of fluff slight pressure to spread it round a bit One finished project. A U bowl. Bowl? What am I talking about? That's a U bowl. What I'm doing next. We're finishing off. The Bud Vars straight leaded box. The inside's done. Quite like the grain and the smoothness. I haven't gone for a high gloss. I've gone for a sheen. Uh, the bottom got finished with that as you can see there got quite a deep crack so I'm going to leave that how it is because the base anyway um, that which I had the problem with if you remember so I mean the grain is pretty wide for this project, I do like those swirls, and then the leg does go on and with a fairly tight fit as well. So we get a flare on the top. If someone goes out, that's pick it up. The base ain't just going to tip all up there, tip on the floor. The if I get a pencil to show you. sticks a flower in the top doesn't go all the way down to the bottom 
so you can have a flower in the top top and then pull it open for the lidded box so that's it and then I'll take some photos in better light on a side note this is my next project well the project that I've started already and the cracks were huge basically I filled it all in with CA and I kind of figured to myself it's gonna when I get all that lot off it's gonna be a rough edge anyway a very rough edge and it's gonna show through the CA I didn't want to go with the coffee grinds solution for this so I've got myself a Dremel a uh, Dremel bit I'm going to make these cracks slightly wider I'm going to fill in with milliput so that's the next project still got this big stump in the middle because I wanted to reverse chuck it uh, you'll see in the video anyway because I've, I've started doing a video for this one uh, the crack goes obviously you can see all the way around and I wanted to see how bad it was in the middle before I carried on so uh, so I took quite a bit of the meat out to have a look to see and repairing the crack repair it repair it so I really want to save it and that is all filled in now with CA so that's very stiff so uh, I'm going to remount that clean it up make the cracks bigger put milliput in clean it up again once I've uh, cleaned it up once I've done the outside, I'll then flip it back round, get rid of this column, save that wood. I'm going to try to try to get it from the side with the hollowing uh, hollowing jig that I've got. Take that big lump out, and then probably use that for a small lidded box or a few pen blanks, even because the crack goes round like that. There's no crack in the middle, so that's all one solid piece, thankfully. So rather than chip it all away into sawdust and chuck it all away, I'll try to save that metal bit. But that's the next project. Thanks for watching. Hope you get something out of it. I know it's been a bit of a mess up, I'm a bit of an amateur at the end of the day, but hopefully you've got something out of this. Happy turning.